I'm Martin Jarvis, and once again, I want to invite you to listen. Well, this year I've had some grass problems. Part of my lawn sort of looks like it has the mange. You've seen dogs, you know, with some of the hair missing and all. Well, that's what my, gr my grass looked like in the front yard. Just a small portion of it. But, you know, it was really, it was really, really bugging me, and especially bugging my wife. And I, you know, I've never really dealt with grass before. You know, for the past 30 years, I've, I've grown plants, you know, vegetables and all that stuff. But as far as grass, I've never in my life done anything but cut grass. And I was hoping the situation was going to clear up itself. But <laughs> like many things in life, they don't. They didn't. I just let it go, let it go, let it go. And it got worse. What's real interesting is that last year, there was grass there, but... There was some crab grass in certain areas of that grass. They sort of messed up, you know, the ground around it. You know, you know, some of you know how crab grass grows. It messes up the regular grass that's around the crab grass. But what's real interesting, and again, I'm totally ignorant to this. I'm not very familiar with grass and all, but, but I don't know if it had anything to do with the weather, you know, that very light winter or, you know, I don't know what caused it, but, but the reality is the, the, the crab grass is gone. It died. But as well, <laughs> the regular grass, where the crab, all that was all around the crab grass, it died too. So it's just bare and dry. You know, there are little spots here and there of, of grass coming up, but, but really it looks pretty bad, okay? So I decided one day I was going to fix it. So I get some grass seeds, you know, and I have one of those little push things that scatter the seed around. Now, I don't know what I'm doing, mind you. But I go out there and I, and I spread this grass seed around. Scott's grass seed supposed to be real good. And then I watered it because it said water it very good. And, and I just left it. And lo and behold, in about five, six, seven days, grass started coming out. And my wife came home and she was really impressed because none of us really are, are at all familiar with this. She, and she was telling me how, how good it's looking and it's coming along. But as I began to look at that grass, I began to realize that uh, that's about as good as it was going to get. You know, And I thought, well, maybe I should have you know, chopped up the ground, you know, fallowed the ground, I guess that's what they call it, you know, sort of got it ready or prepared it, but but, it, but all the hoping in the world and all the wishing, it, it wasn't going to get any better. Now, I did enjoy the accolades from my wife, you know, as men, we know, we like that, you know, we hate the opposite, but when they're giving us compliments, we just eat that up, but I knew in, in my in back of my mind that that, that grass wasn't going to get any better than that, okay, so I had to make a decision. And so the next week I, I went to the store and I bought uh, more grass seed and I bought some, uh, some potting soil because again I know how to grow plants in pots. And uh, I went to my wife I said, you know, do you trust me? And <laughs> she said, yeah. I said, well, I'm gonna, I need to chop up all that ground out there even to where I planted that grass seed because I got to flip that dirt over and then replant some seed and put this potting soil on top of it, you know. She said, I trust you. And so that's what I did. And lo and behold, the grass is coming back even better. It's coming, coming back thicker, you know, because I, was the ground, the, the ground that I had previously planted on was just hard, that hard baked dirt, and, and nothing was really happening. So once I flipped it over and chopped through and then replanted in one, it's doing a lot better. But then, you know, a couple days ago I looked at it, actually yesterday, and I thought I could do a little better job than that. And so I went and got some more grass seed, and I got this special kind of fertilizer soil. And I, I spread it out, even where the grass was already growing up now, I spread it over, over all that grass. And then I just very liberally, you know, spread out, thick, you know, a lot of grass seed all over, where before I was allowing that little machine to shoot the grass seeds out. This time I just got a big bucket, and I was just pouring this grass seed, still evenly, but basically blanketed, you know, where I put that new fertilizer dirt over the existing grass. And I watered it all night. And in the morning, it looks a lot better. The existing grass has popped up through that stuff I laid yesterday. Plus, I could tell this stuff is getting ready to come up really well. It's doing going to do real well. And, and as well, what I found is I have to water the, the, the grass like every morning. Every morning I get up. You know, when I did that stuff last night, I did it at night. But every morning now, I'm just watering that grass and it's coming up. Very impressed with myself, okay? 
but I, but I learned a lot from that from that process. You know, I find myself through life just as I walk through life and interact with people through life. I find all kinds of lessons through all of my interactions, through all of my experiences. You know, and and that's I think what we should do. Whatever happens to us, you know, through the course of our lives, you know, don't get so bummed out or negative if something's bad, and don't get too gleeful if it's good. Just look at it as all experience. And even the good things that happen, you know, you know, be careful because it may not always be good, but as well, try to remember what you did exactly, you know, so that good manifested. You know, I'm a firm believer in that, that you, 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 you know, what goes around comes around. You reap what you sow. And so something good came in my life. I try to go back and look at the good things that I've been doing. Maybe I've been doing good for people or helping people or going out of my way. And maybe this is sort of a, a positive manifestation of that. I know that my son, who's getting ready to graduate from UC this year, this is his last quarter, when he was in high school, he was working, I believe, at Max and Irma's, okay? And he was doing real well, getting real good tips. Now, he's got a real good personality, really charming young man. But before he even began working there, when he was a lot younger, I was always a big tipper. I mean, I'd be tipping like 30%, just a lot. Sometimes I'd tip just about as much as the meal was, simply because I realized that that waitress or that waiter just wasn't making that much money, and their money was in the tips. And God has blessed me all through my life, even in spite of the mistakes that I've made, with, with, good, with a, a good job and good money, you know, good situations. So anytime I have an opportunity at a restaurant to bless the, uh, the waitress or the waiter, I always have. And then when my son, years later, began working at a restaurant, he would come home amazed at, at the tips that he was getting, even far beyond the people that he worked with. And, and I have to, in the back of my mind, believe, maybe, you know, because what goes around comes around. I was sowing into the lives of, of other people's children, and, and at this time in my son's life, someone is, is reciprocating and sowing into mine. So, so anytime good things happen, try to look back, even at your most recent life, and, and try to pick out some of those things and duplicate them. Keep doing well. Keep doing right. Because if karma is such a thing, and we usually equate it negatively, that something's going to come back on you, you know, because of what you did. No, well, if it's really true, then, then as well, positively, that will come back on you as well. So try to do good. Try, try to figure it out. And so what I've seen, even with this situation with this grass over here, that, that I, I look at us as human beings, and, and, and I sort of correlate that, the condition of our lives sometimes when it's not well. When, when things aren't well, like that grass that was popping up initially, I mean, it was there and it was grass, but it was far beneath the potential that my yard had, okay? And, and I had sort of grown accustomed to it, grown satisfied. I was even getting compliments from my wife and all. I could have just not done anything else and just allowed that to be the grass. But I realized, even as far as a little bit of experience I was getting in horticulture, that, that this, the grass, my yard could be a lot better than just that little bit that had sprouted up. And then so I made a decision. I made a decision to dig it up and start all over again. And, and what I'm suggesting here, and I guess you probably see where I'm going with this, in our lives as well, we, we settled. Too often we settled for the condition of our lives. I mean, we know that we, we might be in relationships, or we might have children, or we might have bosses, or work, co-workers, or whatever. No, we can't change their lives. And, but we do spend our times, a lot of times, bickering and badgering other people about the condition of their lives and the actions and the things that they do. But in reality, if we begin to look at our lives, spend more time looking at our lives more critically, we begin to understand that we have a long way to go as well, and that whatever is manifested is probably far beneath the potential that we have in our lives. We can do better. And, and so but sometimes it's, it, what, it, what it takes is some very critical judgment about ourselves. Uh, you know, we, we do go comfortable even in our ills. And so, so although this might not be the best situation to be in, it is comfortable because I've been used to it. But, but sometimes we have, to, we have to stretch outside of ourselves and look at ourselves and recognize that, that the decisions we make and the lifestyles that we live and even the lifestyles that we acquiesce to, oh, well, this is just the way life is going to be for me. It, sometimes those decisions have far-reaching effects outside of just our own lives and into the lives of our children the lives of other young people that may be watching us, okay? 
I see it in the neighborhoods all the time where, where the kids don't seem to be getting better. Situations seem to be getting worse. The violence seems to be getting worse. The drug use seems to be getting worse. The, 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 the young people, the pregnancy rate, all those ills and issues that have befallen our community don't seem to be getting any better. And what I'm suggesting is the role models, those of us who are in the communities that the young people, young people upon young people are looking at, what do they see? And so what do they have to aspire to anything different? All they have is this reality, you or me in front of them. And, and if we don't continuously and consciously check ourselves and our lives and, and try to determine are we doing right or are we doing the best that we can, are we operating to the fullest of our potential, we can't expect any more from our children. And so, so I had to go out there and turn that ground over. I had to get in there, you know, and break up that ground. Even, even the part of the ground where the grass was coming up healthy in those little spots, I had to destroy those too. So that which, that which seemed okay in the yard, I had to turn that. I had to destroy that as well simply to prepare the ground to be able to receive and to produce something greater. And so I'm suggesting that in our lives today it might be a little painful. It, 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 might, it might sort of, you know, nick at our ego just a bit. But we do need to come to a place where we recognize the potential is not being met and the potential in our lives will never be met if the ground remains the way that it is. Our ground might be our, our heart or, or our mind, our thought process, our thinking, okay? And so we got to turn that ground, we got to turn that ground over, what I, what I did with my yard. And, and see, where I'm correlating that to, the turning of the ground, that is simply to me is a change of mind. We need to change our minds, okay? So right now, we're rigid. You know, as human beings, especially the older we get, the more rigid we get. This is the way that it is. This is the way that I am. I can't see anything different. Nothing else is going to change. This is just the way that it is. We're rigid. And, and that rigidity, I'm comparing to that hard ground where nothing else other than what is growing can grow because it's hard, it's baked in there, it's rigid, it's almost dead in a sense, but stuff is growing. In order for us to, to prepare ourselves to, to be able to even receive more and produce more, we have to change our minds, and that's turning that ground over. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is planting some seeds. We need to plant some seeds, okay? <laughs> So what are seeds? What do we correlate seeds to? Seeds would be ideas. You know, maybe from reading magazines or, or, or from, you know, watching programs on television. I, I think one of the biggest things, you know, a big thing in our lives that has been very negative, detrimental to even receiving seeds, you know, that, that will help us, that will guide us in, into doing things that are better for our lives are these reality programs. If you notice, man, they're, they're just really catching on, and they wouldn't be catching, they wouldn't be producing so many reality programs if people weren't watching them, okay? And so what I'm suggesting is that we find multitudes and multitudes of people watching these reality programs, watching the situations of other people's lives, while at the same time neglecting the situations of their own life. We, we know what Shanae is doing. We know what, I don't know, whatever their names are, Kim and Kardashian and, and uh, you know, we know what they're doing. We know all about their lives and everything that they're about. And, and, and as we're so much so focused on their lives, we sort of neglect our own. That's what I'm saying. So, so part of the, the seeds then is, yeah, watching TV, but watching something educational, watching something that will give you ideas about your life, not simply watching the issues and drama in somebody else's life, okay? It's sort of like getting us off the track, getting us off focus, okay? So, so changing our minds, that's turning that ground over, turning that dirt over, uh, eliminating that hard part of our personality and revealing the soft, the, the sensitive, the pliable, uh, that part that's ready to, for new ideas, right? And then planting the seeds, the new ideas, and, and that's not just TV, but magazines, books maybe. Other people that are successful in those areas. Uh, uh, you know, something, a side note, my daughter, she's, you know, she does a lot of things. You know, she practices the martial arts. She does many things, but, but she's in the first grade. And, and recently, they were, the first graders were introduced to track, okay, for, to see which kids might want to sign up for track next year. So my daughter wanted to do it. And, and but then she ran and she ran her races. She ran the 400, ran the 200, ran the 100 all. And, and but she didn't do as well as she wanted to do. And, and see, I don't know anything about track. I played baseball as a kid. I bowled. I practiced the martial art. And that was basic. I'm a pinball wizard, you know. <laughs> but that's about it. 
And so, so I made a little video of her running this race they had at Northmont, and my sister was uh, watching the video, and, and she said, she's got the wrong kind of shoes on. Those aren't running shoes. <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't know anything about track. I know when my son ran track at Chaminade years ago, I would go and watch him, but still, just because it's my kid. I didn't know what the 100 or the 200 was back then. This is just my kid running, and I'm there watching it and enjoying it. But now, at this young age, my sister's like, she got the wrong kind of shoes on. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. So then I took her, I took her just today, I took her up to, uh, up to Foot Locker at the mall. And I was so fortunate that the that the gentleman in there, he's a college he, he's a college graduate. I guess he's working in between, you know, looking for something better. But he used to run track when he was in college. And I said, great, because I don't know anything about track. I said, so I was asking about the shoe. He found a good shoe. And then I was even asking about nutrition, the type of food she should eat. And I mean, all that stuff. I mean, we need to, to, to relieve ourselves sometime in order to get those good, pure seeds to relieve ourselves of some of the pride, some of the ego, especially us men. And say, hey, this is an area that I'm not familiar in. I don't know anything about this. And we need to find people that know what we need to know. That's a seed, okay? Finding professionals, finding people that are doing what you want to do and say, hey, can you share with me some insight? Can you give me some of that information? This, and, and you know what? As human beings, we love to help folks. We love to share the insight that we have. And he gave me all kinds of insight. And, and we had a great conversation you know, after that. I appreciated, uh, I appreciated that. But that was, a, that was a bearer of seeds. That was an individual that knew something that I needed. And, and I got that from him. And I was able to impart that into my child. That transference right there. That fast. She's these cool little Adidas running shoes, and they're really comfortable. She's telling me, you know, how they feel like air or cushions when she's walking. But it's, I mean, she's just thrilled that she has a shoe that's a running shoe when she was wearing these hard <laughs> tennis shoes that my, my wife and I, we didn't know the difference. Seeds, okay? So first of all, we got to change our minds, not be so hard, not be so rigid. And then we got to look for seeds, seeds in the areas of, of areas that might improve our lives. People that have what we have, books, read books, magazines, all that stuff, okay? And then what? Then there's the fertilizer. There's the watering of it every day. There's something that, that we have to do to, to continue. We, we can't lose. A lot of times we, we come up with these epiphanies. We come up with these, these big ideas. You know, hey, I'm going to join the health spa. Hey, I'm going to change my diet. Go, go on this new kind of, you know, eating um, regimen. And, and we get these big ideas. And, and a lot of times they only last for about a week. And then it's over. We can't do that. It's, it's like the watering of this grass. Every morning, I mean, I work. Okay, I, I have to leave early in the morning, but I get up earlier now just to water the area where I've planted those seeds, where I've planted that grass. Because it takes that watering, so I'm saying is the ideas, you know, so we, we change our minds, we get the ground turned over, and, and so we're soft and we're pliable, the seeds are planted. And, and, and the fertilizer, you know, the, the, the first steps into really pr preparation for those seeds to grow well. But then we have to water it every single day. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. As, as many of you know that, you know, I, I, I am a minister. We, we started a, a ministry, a new ministry recently. I've been a pastor for many years, but we started a new ministry in Dayton. But, you know, before we started that ministry, uh, even I, I had created this website <laughs> that validated what it was that, that I saw myself as. And, and, and even, even when others didn't see that, I was in between churches, you know, for a minute there. The church that I had been a pastor in for all those years, a staff pastor. But I was still, I'm Pastor Martin, you know. And, and I remember there was a, one of the pastors from that church who we're still in relationship with about a year or so after, you know, came to me and said, well, why are you calling yourself a pastor? What are you a pastor of? <laughs> and, you know, at first you want to feel bad, you know. But the reality is you have, to, you have to find ways to encourage yourself. You have to find ways to keep, keep, the dream, keep the hope alive. You, know, you have to find a way to make sure that you hang in there. Keep watering. Keep reminding yourself. Stay motivated. Stay focused. If you have to get pictures of a certain thing that it is your desire, put them on the walls. You know, my daughter practiced karate, and when she started two years ago, you know, my wife had kind of an issue with it. practicing. That's good, I guess. But my 
wife had an issue with my daughter practicing karate because my, my wife, you know, all she saw when you know when she had this little baby girl was you know dressing her up in the bows and this and that and the karate seems to go opposite, you know, opposed to what it is she wants her daughter to be. So she had a problem with karate. So I had to, and then you know that that kind of influence even in your daughter's mind, you know, she might have even been questioning it herself. So I went through the internet, man, and I found pictures of black belt girls, one Asian, one black, one white, in various, you know, martial art poses, and I glued them to the wall in our little workout area, just so every day she walks in there, she can see girls that have progressed that are black belts in this thing that she is a white belt in just starting. Now that was two years ago. My daughter's a senior purple belt now, seven years old. But, but I, I understand that the idea of encouraging yourself. And so as a parent, I put these pictures up to encourage her. So if there were ever any doubt in her mind, if she could do this or if a girl should be doing this, she could see that encouragement every day. Okay, that's the watering every day. Every day, every day, encouraging yourself, uh, motivating yourself, never giving up. Because I promise you, you, you can prepare the, the ground all you want. You can, you can lay all the seeds that you want. You can put, you can put the fertilizer and have it all set up but if you stop watering it all that preparation all the process up to that point it's for nothing that grass is going to die so 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 it's continual that's the watering so that's what I'm sharing today it's just a quick little message based on an experience I had with this yard <laughs> it was it was jacking me up man I didn't know what to do but when I put that thing together when it all came together I realized something real about our lives that it's the perfect model for our lives turn the ground over it's been hard for too long if you want more to manifest plant the seeds fertilize it and water it every day that's that's our lives and you know we look at as we're gonna close here we look at President Obama okay we're coming, you know, to the beginning of something new, a new presidency, either his or somebody else's. Either way, it's okay. I mean, I have my favorites, you know. We all have our favorites who we're probably going to vote for. But, but just say he doesn't become president. What's that mean? What's that mean to African Americans? Well, it should be nothing. He's been there four years. Because he, as, as I see it, you know, as far as the political process goes, that, that's for other folks. That's for people, that's for rich folks. That's for people that are, are well, you know, financially. It, it, then they can, they can banty around or barter around or argue back and forth, you know, this policy or that policy or this cut or that cut. But as far as just regular folks, we need, we need to recognize that no matter who's in office, we have to survive, okay? And we've survived this long with Democrats in office, with Republicans in office. I mean, we've survived, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. What is a big deal is that we need to use President Obama, President Obama, as, as sort of the catalyst, sort of that which allowed us to see that our yard wasn't as, as, as plush as it could have been, that things aren't as well in our lives as they could be. We see a, a man that has got a good education, an African-American man. And his wife has a good education. And they're raising up some, half, some normal seeming kids, good kids, getting them an education. And they've made money and, and just made all the right moves. And what I'm, or many right moves. Nobody makes all the right moves. So what I'm suggesting today is that we just realize that for ourselves, that we can look at the president and say, hey, you know, our lives can be a little bit better. Maybe we can get a little bit more educated. Maybe we can, you know, do better by our children, be an example of education to our children. Maybe we can begin to eat right or exercise or, or do things, you know, that are a positive example in front of our kids. And so that's what I believe, that the president has allowed us to see that, that our, our yards are just not as plush as they could be. Because you know what's real funny is, as I, as I began working on that little spot on the yard, then I began looking at the rest of my yard. Now the rest of my yard is green, and, and it looks fine to me. But, but as I'm beginning to really look closely and work on certain parts of the yard, helping them to be healthy, helping them to be better, I'm recognizing that my whole yard is unhealthy. I mean, it's green all over the place, but I can look at it closely now with a more critical eye and recognize that there's a lot that can be done, that, that I can be spreading more stuff over the yard, you know, even when there aren't patches in the yard just to keep it healthy. Sort of what we should be doing with our lives, you know. Instead of, you know, taking vitamins and eating right after we're diagnosed with an illness, you know. 
<laughs> are brushing our teeth uh, after we've lost them, you know, or something to that effect. Let's, let's just begin to be proactive, okay? And that's what it showed me, man. This, 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 has, this, this yard that I have, had, it looks great to somebody just driving by. But critically, you know, I recognize there's a lot to be done. Just like our lives, people look at us often at work, at church, you know, out and about, wherever we are. People think, man, that guy's got it going on. He, he looks pretty good. He's got it together. But you know what you look like without your clothes on, right? <laughs> it may not be all that, okay? But there's work that you could do. And let me close with this. There's always work that you could do. I mean, I've, I felt I've been, I'm in pretty good shape, you know, for a man. My, I'll be 54 this year. But you know, just recently I had this little ailment in my hand where some muscle had atrophied in between my thumb and my forefinger. And, and I had gone to the doctor, you know, to get it checked out. And they said, yeah, something happened with the nerve and, you know, the muscle. First, you know, we could start you with some physical therapy and then we might have to do surgery. I said, well, I can do the physical therapy. So I bought this device, okay? I bought this device from a martial art magazine off of their website. It's called the Tire Claw. And it's sort of, I wish I had it with me right now. And it's sort of, it's, it's this round metal thing. And it has these little hooks and springs on them. And you hook a, you hook a hook around each of your fingers. And you just pull it, you know? You pull it. You pull it. And you're exercising your fingers. And I was having some numbness in my fingers. A numbness had gone away. For so, so let me not jump the gun. So, so about maybe five months ago, I started doing this. And, and I couldn't hardly do it to maybe 10 or 15. I couldn't tie my, my shoelaces. It was kind of bad. But, but then I kept doing it. I was up to like 20 and 30 and 40. I was up to around 60. And, and, and then I, I got one of those other little devices that you can get in the, in the uh, exercise where you just squeeze the hand thing. You know, the two pieces come together. You shape like an A or something. Squeeze those about 20 or 30 times. So, so I was doing it both about 60 times, and then I realized, man, my, this arm part, my forearm was growing. I was getting this muscle in here. And this is my left hand, you know. I'm right-handed. And then I look at my right hand, and it was like, man, this one's skinnier. I was doing all this exercise with this hand, just trying to help what I saw as an ailment. And in the course of this hand getting stronger and this arm getting stronger, I began to notice that my left arm, my weak arm, was stronger than my, the arm that I used, my right arm. It was bigger. So what did I do? So then I started doing this one. So I do this hand, and then I do this hand. And, and, and every day, every day, a couple times a day, I use it. When I, I set it in my car, so every time I jump in the car, I exercise. And now I'm up to a hundred of the tiger claws, a hundred of those squeeze things, and then I do a hundred of the tiger claws with this one, and a hundred of the squeeze things with this one. And I've noticed on both of my arms, I'm getting this muscle in here that I've never had before. And that encouraged me. So then I bought some dumbbells. Now, I'm going to be 54 this year, okay? I bought some dumbbells, and I put them in front of my television. So now every time I sit down, well, I try just about every time, not every time. I, I try to do like 40 of these things. One, two, three, four. And, and so now I'm getting in shape like I should have done this when I was 30 or 20 or whatever. But it was like I was focused on something that wasn't right, sort of like that patch in my grass. And as I began working on that, I've been to recognize that other pieces of my body wasn't really looking to its potential. And I began working on that as well. And so I'm just suggesting today, you know, for, you know just this, that so we begin looking at ourselves more critically. And never be satisfied, never be complacent with the situation of your life. I don't mean to be uptight or upset or unhappy and driven to an obsession. But I mean just recognize if things could be just a little bit better, why not? Some of y'all know I've been in school since Obama became president because <laughs> it just touched me so much. And I put it on the program that, you know, something magical was in the air, so it's time to do something you ordinarily wouldn't do. I'm in my last class, and I'll have my degree. I have to tell you, man, this is like this algebra class has been, <laughs> it's been killing me. But I'm just, I'm, I think I'm going to squeak by it, you know. If I can get a C, I'll be fine. I've had like A's all the way through this, but man, this algebra is it's, it's, some people love it, but I like it too. But I'm just saying is there are just, there are just, there are just things in our lives that we can improve and we should improve. I'm telling you, and let me close with this, because my wife told me I just ramble sometimes, but I think I'm rambling now. But I'm going to close with this, okay? I've been in this algebra class, I mean not algebra, I've been in school now for like three and a half years. My daughter just turned seven. So as far as, as far as she knows from the time she was maybe four years old or so, I've been attending school. 
and I haven't, you know, our kids watch us, watch us to, to where we don't even realize they're watching us, but, but we are examples in the, in the eyes of our children. Now, yeah, just the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I took my first exam in this algebra class, actually my second exam in the algebra class, and I didn't do too well. And it was like, man, I came home and I was in my mind, I was thinking about quitting, you know, just forget it. I'm not even going to do this. You know, I, I'm, st I'm stuck on this last class and I don't think I'm going to make it. I came in the house that evening, my daughter was laying on the bed and she didn't say anything. But, but, but she thought I was going to quit. And the look on her face was about, she was about to cry. And so to me, that, that made me think right then, she's been watching me. This has been an example to her. Now, if I quit, what kind of example is that going to be? So it's like, I'm back in there, man. I'm going to squeak out of there, maybe with a C or something. But I'm passing this class. Because my kid is watching me. I didn't even know she was watching me like that. Who's watching you? Think about it. But anyway, I do want to thank you. I want to thank you for joining me once again and listening. And I want to invite you to listen again. Take care.